Hi, this is Gene Hammett with Core Elevation. <laughs> um, yep, Core Elevation. So I wanted to, to, to reach out to Mike because I, I ran into him back in Reno when we both spoke at the WordPress Reno, or WordCamp. And I was really impressed with the fact that he had a niche, one, but two, he was really doing what I've been helping all of my clients find for themselves, which is an area of focus that allows them to really go deep into that industry and really make a difference. Um, and it's, it's, it's almost like by the playbook because when I watched him present, he's like, of course, we've got a, play, we've got a, a, a plug-in to help us support what we're doing for our, our clients. Uh, that's dealer, uh, cardealerpress.com. Um, so I was just really impressed with the fact that you had a focus. So tell us a little bit more about you, Mike. Um, so I actually st st stumbled into this. Um, I worked in the car business for about 10 years, did uh, management and sales and internet sales before, or, I mean, back when we actually did, um, the internet leads came in as a fax. So you know, not even an email, you know, when the internet was really, really young. Uh, so I, I've always had kind of a propensity for technology. Um, was always an early adopter for just about every software and every, um, device that you could have back then, and um, as I, that evolved, I Im eventually left the car business and, and stumbled into Dealer Trend, which at that point was a um, an inventory control tool, a uh, great tool. But you know, once we we, we we've evolved um, through several iterations, we did CRMs, we did um, websites, you know, all that, and kind of fine tuned to websites. And then, and then got into the uh, the WordPress side of it being such a phenomenal CMS and so easy to use, and saw the evolution of that. We kind of decided to, to do the plugin. So that's that's kind of me my my, uh, my story up until this point. So what triggered? Did you move right from the the uh, car dealership into web design, or do you went through CRM and all these other things? Um, went through, we did web design at the, at the beginning. That wasn't our main focus. That wasn't the focus of the, the, the software we had built. Um, but because we had inventory control, uh, yeah, that was obviously one of the big steps within creating websites back then. Um, very few people had that ability you know, to, to take an inventory of 100 vehicles or 200 vehicles and, and automatically pull it from the dealer's management systems, which are their, their DMSs or accounting systems, put it into a software and then, and then display it on the web. So it was kind of a natural evolution that both of those met up, um, but it wasn't primarily web design at that point. Okay. Because I, I always like to ask someone, how did you get into finding your niche? But So you mm -hmm. came from that industry and then added technology to that. Correct. Which, which made it easy for you to probably go, this just makes sense for me to only work with with auto dealers, correct. Yeah, and it just you know, once you have that software and an inventory tool like we do, um, it didn't make sense. We've actually made the mistake of trying to get into other verticals here and there. And when you do, when you build websites, people will ask you all the time, "Hey, you know, I've got one. Will you will you help me rebuild mine?" And 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 every single time we did that, it was a mistake. Uh, <laughs> it just it took more time. We weren't able to leverage on what we've done before. You rebuild the wheel every time, and, and you're just um, you're working harder, not smarter so when you do that. Do you know that that's what a lot of web designers do with their business? They just keep taking whatever client comes to them, yeah, and they yeah, never it's... learn how to leverage that and create that iterative process of, of making something better and, and having more success with with a, an industry. Yeah, it's it's very common. And even with us, it, even within the car industry, we're starting to actually filter even deeper now because WordPress is um, pulling. It, it, it WordPress has the um, kind of a draw to the more technologically advanced car dealers and internet directors and so forth. So what we're seeing within that is we're starting to um, be a little bit more discerning with the type of car dealer client we take. <laughs> Right, because if they just want a website and they want everything to be automated and just do it for them, that's not our that's not our focus. Our yeah. focus is the, the 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 dealer that's finally come to the understanding that they need to to work at it. I mean, it just websites. You know, uh, it doesn't matter what your website is, how pretty it is, what kind of content it has. 
But if the owner of the website's not working it, it's not going to be as successful as it can be either. So we want those customers. Yeah. So now we're kind of this niche inside of a niche inside of a niche. I, um, and interesting. That is really cool because um, I get questions all the time. I work with groups of web designers. Um, I work have some private clients, but I also have groups. And I just hung up with a call with them. And one of the questions was, how do you get your clients to block? And I jokingly say, and, and they kind of say, well, you got the wrong clients. <laughs> because yeah. if they're not going to blog, they're not going to invest in in your services over and over and create a strategic partnership with you. Yeah. Um, I say that jokingly, but the idea is how do you get them to see the, the value behind that? Yeah. I got a couple other questions. I'm going to jump into this. Um, I had to write them. I had to print them out. Actually, I never print anything out because I'm looking at you on the screen. Yeah, sure. What do you think? Um, it probably wasn't very hard for you to, to find your niche, right? Because it, it was something natural to you. Yeah, you know, like I said, it kind of found me. Um, you know, I've always liked tech and, and having come from the car business, the two just kind of met up. And, um, it, you know, it's something I, I love doing. So just it evolved. It worked. It found me. It, you know, it's worth saying here. I remember from the speech, one of the questions you got from the audience was, do you take clients outside of auto dealerships? And you pretty clearly said, no. <laughs> yeah, just, yeah like I said, I've done it before. So yeah, no, it's, it's, um, you know, once you've done it, it's, I guess, like you mentioned that there are web designers that will take any client, you know, anybody that's going to give them money, it's, oh yeah, I gotta, I, I gotta take it. Um, but once you get past that ability and, and can de definitively say no, it's, yeah. it's, it's such a, a relief that I know what I'm doing and every every step I take is to make the next step easier. You're leveraging constantly. Yeah, I I yeah. totally agree with you. Um, I have two questions from my group. I'm gonna dig out that piece of paper. One was, and it probably don't apply to you as well, but you can kind of answer them anyway. When you started to narrow your business more and more, have you mm -hmm. noticed an, an increase in the pricing that you were able to charge? Um. Actually, it's kind of worked the opposite. It's, okay. it's kind of yeah. So, um, so yes, we could probably charge more, but it. Um, I saw an increase in the profit we were making. Okay. Because we needed less people to produce the product. Right. Um, you know, in, in a niche industry that's as competitive as the car industry, prices it becomes a, a an interesting factor. You know, um, either you're charging more than everybody or less than everybody or somewhere in between. And and with our product, we don't necessarily build the end result as much. Um, so we're not doing the customer service. We're not doing the tier one support. Okay. We build the plugin, and then we've got marketing companies um, and SEO companies, and the web design companies that are actually building and doing the tier one uh, aspect with the the car dealers. So, so you so, you mostly moved into the the building products and solutions as opposed to the design work. Exactly. Yeah, okay. we still do the design work, and we actually contract out, and we'll we'll do white label stuff for for those kind of companies. Okay. So we're still a, a web design company, but our real core is that 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 automotive um, product. We but we have to build the sites and and kind of eat our eat our own dog food, if you will. Yeah. So that we can pass on best practices to other web designers that want to use our stuff. So the real key here is you're making more profit because you can deliver. Better results. You can do it faster and cheaper because you're leveraging what you've already done, and right. that's giving you a better, stronger business. Without a doubt. Yeah. Um, and you're continuing to focus it even more narrow, as you said before. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We're constantly focusing in, and then you know that then being able to leverage off. We we've built it to leverage off other web designers as well, so that they can find their own niche within the car industry, even it, even if it's a. Um, a location, you know, if they, it's you know, the car dealers kind of need a little bit more FaceTime. I, anybody with a business needs a lot of FaceTime when it comes to right. the, to a website, and, and that's one of the reasons why we did it that way. So we're able to leverage that too. Uh, the other question that that Core Roundtable had was, um, how'd you get your first few clients in your niche? Yeah. Um, so when I came to to Dealer Trend, they actually had a couple clients. The the Dealer Trend was created by a dealer to be an inventory control tool. It was, it was a, an itch they needed to scratch, um, contracted out for a software company to build it. 
Um, that's what develops dealer trend. And then it just kind of evolved from there. Um, and that first product never really, you know, it, it, uh, although now it's, it's a very popular product in the industry when we did it, it was well before its time. So, uh, so the first few clients came that way and then, and then local, you know, just found it on doors locally at all the car dealers. Hey, we can actually do your website the way you need it to be done. Do you feel like it's easier for you to get indoors with other do- dealerships than someone who doesn't have that focus? Oh, easy. Yeah. You know, it's cause they get hit up all the time. Right. Um, car dealers, you know, there, there's the, um, you know, obviously there's a mon- lot of money that flows to the auto industry in general and car dealers get targeted for SEO companies and everything. Um, but they, they tend to gravitate towards the ones that are in their niche because they understand it a little bit better. So yeah, just talking the lingo, understanding what they're going through inside makes a big difference. Yeah. Do you, do you feel like I want, I want to switch gears just a little bit about measuring success because I'm putting together some research on measuring success with web design. Okay. Um, and one of the things I, I went back and rewatched your presentation from Reno. Um, it's really important for you guys to have to to understand the value behind what you're doing and providing for your clients, right? Oh yeah. So how are you measuring success with with your clients? Um, you know, we do a lot of things, um, and and I'm and, and this is one of those things. Being in a niche, we're constantly trying to fine tune that and get better metrics for them. Mm-hmm. Uh, the car industry is, is a is is very difficult um, to actually measure true results. Um, sure, we can get you know how many visits did your website get? How many um, page visits can we get? But it it's, it varies from from market to market to market. So, you know, you, you, you really need to benchmark where they're at now um, and not let them try and compare themselves against everybody else. You know, first of all, you know, where are you at now and how can you make yourself better and what can you do? And then, um, you know, the, the, the difficult part is, is actually tracking the metrics end to end, you know, from, you know, somebody clicks on the website to they, they bought a car. Um, and that, you know, gets into a lot of privacy things and we'd love to have that kind of data, but it's, it's, it's not really ethical in a lot of ways, um, to know, you know, what they were looking on the site and go, Hey, Mrs. Smith, I, I, I know you were looking at these cars too. Um, you know, follow me. It gets a little creepy. So, you know, somewhere in between there, we're constantly fine tuning, you know, what, what is driving people to the website, uh, um, what we, you know, the heat maps, um, you know, what, what pages are getting hit the most landing pages, how effective are they? We're constantly trying to find that conversion to a, to an email lead or a phone call. So I, I don't know. Did that answer your question? It or does. I mean, kind of a, you're putting more into some of the advanced solutions than just a Google analytics, looking at page views and unique visitors and bounce sure. rates. I mean, those are that, that's a, a level of measurement, but you're going into the heat maps, the, the testing, um, detail conversions, probably engagement. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Without a doubt. How, how long are they staying on those landing pages, especially if there's videos on them? Right. Uh, we want to know, you know, what they're doing there. I've got an interview coming up. Are you doing anything around measuring the effectiveness of videos? Like, um, how long yes. they're watching them? And yeah, a little bit, a little bit. You know, it's interesting because um, you know, it, in the in the car industry, there's a lot of um, dealers that have wanted to put a video on their homepage and have it play right out of the gate, you know, autoplay. Yeah. Well, we know, um, even today, you know, in these, t- you know, with, with, uh, mobile devices and so forth, the, the people's browsing patterns are adjusting a little bit, but for the most part, people are still browsing Monday through Friday, nine to five. So while they're at work, <laughs> they're, 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 they're searching for cars, you know, they're thinking yeah. about, you know, what car am I going to get? What am I going to do this weekend? Am I going to go to this dealership or that dealership? So they're browsing at those times a lot. Um, so you got to be real careful of how you utilize video in the car business. Okay. We're, we're actually, you know, one of the things we're, we're doing a lot of experimentation with now is um, the layered sliders. Okay. So it's, it's kind of a level in between, um, uh, you know, a full-on video. And it's, I, I don't know if you're familiar with the layered sliders. It's, you know, the... You know, the, the background comes in, you know, pieces come over the top, a little call to action. So it's got movement okay, uh, and it's got some interesting elements to it. So that's, that's something we're doing a lot of exploration. Is that converting better than video or? Um, you, you know what? It's, 
it is because it's more volume. You know, video is great if you can get somebody to click the play button, um, but that's a commitment. That's a time commitment. Right? You know, it's you've got to you've got to sell them on hitting the play button before they'll hit the play button, and then right. the, you know it's it's a it's an iterative process. Whereas um, whereas a, a slideshow that has these elements that are coming in, it gets some engagement right away. It's it's it, it's compelling to watch. Um, you know, especially after you've watched the first one or the second one. So we're doing a lot of testing there, and, and ultimately, in volume, we'll get better conversion. What's interesting, and I think you know this, every because you're in a niche, but every audience is going to be different. You're going to some video, sure. some want video. Yep. Um, some may not want any of those things. They want the stain, the static, the static websites. Yep. Cool. Yeah. Um, the video- but one, one other thing to mention with video in the, in the car industry, I don't know if you've been on a car dealer website, but a lot of them you'll get to a what they call a VDP or the vehicle detail page. It's you know kind of the product page of a okay. of a actual car. So um, you get to that page and it says play video. And what they're doing and what's been going on for five years at least, maybe a little longer, is a video comes up with stitched photos. So they take all the photos of the car. Um, they they use like a, a use a Ken Burns effect, fade the the image in, use a human voiceover to you know highlight some features and things like that. So that that's been very common for a lot of time, for quite a while. At, when it first came out, it was effective, got a lot of views, got a lot of engagement. Um, it's it's at least in our experience, it's um, diminished quite a bit because it's it's the same images they can see and the options they can read. Uh, so, you know, where, where I'm, I'm hoping, and I, I think car dealers could really leverage this better. And, and I think we talked about it a little bit before is if they were to go out and actually do their walk around videos themselves, okay. you know, put people in the mix. And I'm, I'm a big, you know, it's from my talk at, at the word Camp Reno, I, I'm sure you remember it's people are really, really big part of it. You know, we need yeah. to engage the two and in the car business, if they're actually doing videos like that. I think we could have a lot of success, but we got to get them to do it first. So, and you know, you you bring this up. I mean, it's really knowing your your audience and knowing the niche really well, and have seen things that have worked so so probably, and some that have failed. But it's fine tuning that over the years that makes you even more profitable with what you do and more valuable to your clients. You bet. Yeah, I can. I'll talk to you know four or five clients a day, especially our our very. Um, forward thinking ones and they're all trying something new and I get to get their feedback as well so they test something, they tell me we bounce some ideas back and forth um, we fine tune it a little bit we move it up um, you know. then we start to get success and then I can share that with somebody else and they put their own spin on it and we can go back and forth that way it's, it's kind of interesting because it is a niche you know, we can all kind of leverage off of each other and, and our, our successes and failures so so one of the things that I, I have this theory, and, and I know it works, but I, in the, the web design business is taking that results that you've gotten from previous clients and building stories out of it. Case mm-hmm. studies, if you want to do that. Do you guys use case studies or any kind of stories to help you get even more clients? Um, I, I, I need to because um, I've got a lot of them. You know, It's just a matter of um, getting the time to, to get that out, and, and, and this is where... Um, I'm learning, you know, as we go, you know, our car dealer press.com site is our blog. Um, cause that's where our plugin is. And we've got a lot of information. We've got a member site there and I'm constantly adding, um, you know, I, I'll get email questions, you know, pretty much daily. Hey, you know, what happens when I do this or what do you think about this? And, and I'll, I'll write out an email. Um, and I try and write out the email that is useful to everybody. And then I'll put it on the site. Um, and then I'll start to categorize it, so it kind of evolves into a case study, um, so that everybody can kind of you know leverage off of that. I need to get it more publicly facing, though, as opposed to behind the members wall, right. uh, so that we get more sales. Like you said, I've got to leverage that on the sales side just as much as I am on the the training side of it. I remember one of the things you mentioned in your speech was the fine tuning of how you did reviews. So you had mm-hmm. streamlined the process of, you know. The girl gets in the car, her keys for the first time, and she you take the salesman takes the picture. Yeah. And it just you fill out these couple of forms through a gravity form. It goes mm-hmm. straight into WordPress and distributes out or syndicates is the word you use. Distri- syndicates out to all the right places. 
sure. SEO for the the uh, the pictures. It goes on the websites. It goes on the the the, the sales reps website. And I'm sure those are all features that you could do, but that's a really interesting way to use what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, without a doubt. And that one, that one we've been working on for a couple of years. It's you know, it's the product is called My Pages. I don't know if you, I think you um, uh, probably remember that, but it's, it's My Pages, and it's each salesperson gets their own website. Right. That's gone through a a, a, a two year evolution of you know from the very beginning of hey let's just do a website for a salesperson. Well, we learned they didn't do it, and then you know all those things, and then we finally got to the point where um, you know we know that the dealer wants SEO, they want reputation um, generation, right? They want to have a good reputation. You know, they they want all those pieces. They want to be in social. They want to be on mobile. So by having that product evolve the way it did, and learn what didn't work and what we needed to do to make it work. Um, it, it turned into that syndication kind of component. It worked out real well. Yeah. All right. I'm gonna look back at my list here. I did have a question though. You said you have a membership site. Do you? Is that something you charge for to be a part um, of? Uh, we've got s- different components. Um, okay. so we do have a free level, which is just a, a, a. I think we've got about 60 videos in there on how to use WordPress. And so for dealers that want to do it themselves, or even people outside the industry, there. Um, there's a lot of a lot of information, but um, you know, so that free level has quite a bit of information, and then the next levels go up to the people that subscribe to our plugin or are resellers for our plugin and the the specific content that they'll each need. Okay, cool. Um, All right, here's my question. This one's mainly for my audience, so if you, if you bear with me a little bit. I've been on this bandwagon about focusing your business. So what would you tell that web designer out there that struggles because they're taking any client that comes to them, um, they're working a lot at their business, but they're not getting paid what they're worth. Mm-hmm. So the, you know, it's kind of like that jack-of-all-trades kind of thing. What, what, what would be your words to encourage them about finding a focus and going for it. Sure. Um, so I guess I would recommend, because the focus could be either um, a product niche, an industry niche, or um, a type of client base that they want, right? You know, whether it's a, you know somebody that's going to be active or, um, you know, it could be even people that don't want to do any of the work themselves. You know, if, if a, a web designer is a, a, um, a good copywriter, and that they, they're both web designer copywriter. Maybe they could provide it to the company, you know, the businesses that don't. So I think what, what what I would recommend is they actually sit down and and write a list of what's important to them, what floats their boat, what makes them excited when they get up in the morning. Because at the end of the day, if you're excited about what you're doing and you're having fun with it, that makes everything kind of easier. Yeah. Um, so, so you know, and, and and it sounds kind of cliche, you know, do what you love, but you know, within it, within web design, find that piece. Whether again, it's you know, say you like you know you, you appreciate lawyers or you you have some background in that. You know, just you know maybe some lists, right? You know, where where, where are my ex- where's my best experience? What am I interested in? Um, you know, what kind of work do I like to do? And then kind of make a make a few lists, kind of like that, um, to to start honing it down. And then once they've decided a spot, stick with it. Don't be afraid of the word no. You know, you got to say no. You know, just focus on that um, that niche that you've decided on, and always, in, you know, at the end of every day, ask yourself, okay, how could I have saved some time? Right? How could I have done that better? How could I have automated that? Because if we can automate, you know, the the daily tasks, you know, either you know, you get a macro program, you know, but do whatever it is that can automate some of those tasks. Build a template that you can leverage every time. I mean, that's one of the things we do. You know, we've got a template we copy it over. We already know that there's going to be a parts page, a service page, a new car page. All that kind of stuff is already on the site. So when we build a site, really, we're just building the the the, the template or the skin um, or child theme. You know, we do however you want to refer to it is uh, is what we're building, and then maybe some extra stuff. So find out what's exciting to you, and then figure out how you can make it easier to do and quicker. Yeah. 
I, I think after you've done those things, because those are really good points, is you begin to see what you couldn't see by taking in all of the clients that come to you. Yes. And you can begin to find those solutions that you can automate that people will pay money for. Yep. And that's kind of what you guys have done with, with uh, the car dealer press. Yeah, yeah, without a doubt. That's a monthly subscriber. It's like $75 a month, right? Um, that's where it starts at. Um, okay. that's, that's for the small independents that actually are manually entering their inventory into our software system. Um, so it and gets then, even higher. Mm -hmm, you bet. Yeah, I think it, we end up averaging about 300 a month when all is said and done, um, just for the plug-in part of it. So I get this question all the time. Is it boring to be in the same niche every day in and day out? Oh, not in the car industry, especially <laughs> not in the car industry. But, and, and I think you kind of you, you skirted on this a little bit. You can go deeper into a niche um, yeah. that you'll never you'll never be able to experience that if you're if you're trying to be everything to everybody. Um, and the car business gets deeper and deeper. And when you want to be proactive, um, you know the, the 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 internet industry in general is still really young, um, and we all have a lot to learn and, and trying to inject all the right things into it. Is um, it takes time, but it's never, never boring, never boring. That's that's good because I, I I believe the same thing too. That once you go deeper, uh, once you narrow it down, so yeah. many more ideas come about what is possible. Sure. Um, even within what I'm doing, I wanted to write a book, and mm -hmm. as a business coach to small business owners, I could I kept starting and 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 not finishing. Mm -hmm. um, but when I picked web designers, I was able to knock out. What exactly were their problems and address those problems within a book, and and put that out. And I mean, it's a small ebook, but I've sold probably almost a thousand copies of that this year, nice in three or four months. Mm -hmm. But I don't know if I would have sold any if I had just put out, you know, grow your small business, because no one mm -hmm. would have read it. But yep. as I put out four for specifically for my industry, deep going deep. They've been they've been going crazy over it. So. Yeah, without a doubt, it's it gives you the ability to be proactive in your niche as opposed to reactive. Um, yeah, it's because otherwise, you when you're building a website, you, you go in and you you have to tell the the client tells you what they want, and you you end up listening. You build what they want as opposed to being able to tell them what they need to get results. And 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 being that expert in your niche is huge. I, you know, you, it makes me think of a question there. I mean, they probably give you more control over the process because they trust you because you've done this many times before than a traditional web designer gets because they go, you know what, I don't like that blue. Mm -hmm. And you probably get that some of that a little bit, but you they probably trust you a lot more. You can control the projects and, and shape the way they they work and the way you want to work, right? Sure. sure. Yeah, I, I always think of um, things like the, the apps, right, iPhone apps and that kind of stuff. Um, or Google, you can't call them up and say, "Hey Google, would you move your you know thing over here?" Because I think it should be this way. Um, they build the product based off of the results they get, and it's their product, and that's the way we see what we've done. It's our product. We've built it because it it gets results for the end user, which is the car buyer. Um, it's not the car. One of the you know my um, pet peeves, I guess, in in our industry is most of the vendors. Um, have will build a website or a product or whatever to sell to the dealer something that the dealer will buy, and and I don't see that as what we you know I don't yeah I want the dealer to buy it but our our end customer is the customer um, that understands that we're building something for their customer right we've got that extra level in there that's a little interesting so. Um, we will. This is our product, and our product is built for the person who's buying a car, because if they can find the car easier, everybody's happier. If they can find the car they want and get all the information, it just it, it's it's a trickle down thing. So, Mike, that's a great point, and I I, I want to go back to this because I, I mean, I'm, the theme of this conversation is around focusing and niching, but you understand the the people who use websites to buy cars and look at cars and come into to dealerships and um, how they give reviews and all that probably better than anyone I know. And it's it, gonna it's, help you with your business. 
Yeah, without a doubt. And and obviously there's people that know more than me and I I would by no means say that I know it all. <laughs> You're more than I know. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, after 20 years of being in, you know, the car industry and and now on, you know, in the car business, um, you know, I was kind of in a unique situation on that side. I I, I worked in in finance. So I was I did the contracting at a car dealership and and I did that for 5 years. And when I did it, we were a pretty high volume store with very few finance people. So I, I actually contracted about 200 deals a month and then all the things that happen um, where you see clients in, in between that. So I was extremely busy. Most, most dealers now won't let you go over 70. Um, so that it's a ton. So I had a, 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 a great opportunity, um, although it was stressful and very, you know, it, was, it wasn't easy. Um, I had the opportunity to learn a great deal about the car industry um, where a lot of people don't get that kind of immersion into it. Um, and then being on this side of it, you know, I've, I've been in the car industry, you know, for a long time and, and, and enjoy that. I, I enjoy both, both sides of it. I enjoy the technology. I enjoy what's going on in the car industry. Um, and, you know, by loving it, it makes it easier to become knowledgeable about it too. Cool. Yeah. So just a couple more questions and I'm going to let you go. Sure. What's your favorite plugin and with WordPress that you didn't write? <laughs> mm, my favorite plugin, I, you know, I'd, um, I'd have to say Gravity Forms. I mean, at least, I, at least that's the first thing that pops to mind. Yeah. Um, just because it's so easy to use, and it's you know, it's one of those things. I, I like being creative and coming up with um, you know solutions mm -hmm. and. You know, one thing I, I will always say is WordPress is a is a great solutions tool, but within that, Gravity Forms is its own solutions tool as well. You know, it's um, it from um, you know what we did with my pages, we use Gravity Forms. Um, what we've done with some other things, I've got a a client right now that wants to have a, a click to um, uh, initiate a text, um, and we can do that with Gravity Forms. So it it, it seems to be such a, a solutions oriented. Product, I, I would say uh, definitely uh, Gravity Forms, at least is for you know what I'm thinking of right now. And it probably helps you syndicate some of that content that you were talking about when you're taking pictures and yeah. getting reviews. Well, and yeah, yeah. So if if somebody can post directly to their WordPress site, then RSS essentially takes care of the rest. And what's your favorite tools associated to measuring success within websites besides Google Analytics? Because everyone does yeah. that. Yeah, um, you know, it's and I think taking Google Analytics to another level, um, using very you know um, uh, custom variables and events tracking and that kind of stuff, I think is is things a lot of people don't associate with Google Analytics. They just plug in the code and go. Yeah, um, you can actually go deeper with Google Analytics. But so outside of that, um, probably heat maps. Um, you know, it's um, Crazy Egg we've used. Um, what is some other ones? Clicktail, you know, and there, there's some um, A/B testing tools that we're, we've played with, and uh, kind of escaping me which you know, the names of those right now. But there's a there's a lot of things, and I don't think anybody should ever um, you know, always explore the new one. It's to, to some degree. I mean, find something that works, get a benchmark, and make yourself just better. Yeah. So. Well, I appreciate your time. Um, so. I'm going to put, when I put this online, I'm going to put your, your contact information on there. But, um, so I'm going to put cardealerpress.com and dealertrend.com. Is there anything else you want to share with? Um, not that I can think of right now. Twitter or? Um, you know, at, at Fitzpatrick on Twitter. Okay. So if anybody wants to follow me there, it's kind of a new account. I don't have a lot of followers on it. I, <laughs> I acquired at Fitzpatrick from a friend. Um, which I didn't have for a long time, so that's why that's where uh, NetBiz Coach kind of evolved, and what I, I had that, and so now now uh, at Fitzpatrick. Well, cool. Well, um, I'm gonna get this ready. I'm gonna put it out, and I appreciate your time. And if there's anything I can do for you, just let me know, Mike. Yeah, my pleasure, and uh, likewise. All right. Thanks. Have a good Bye. one.